Okay. Okay. This picture here was taken in August of 1990. I was a broadcast journalist in the U.S. Navy at that time, and I didn't take the picture that the Department of Defense did, but I was covering a Soviet ship visit to my hometown of San Diego, California. That's the Coronado Bridge. At that time, most people thought that the Cold War was over, and the original Cold War was. Fast forward 25 years later to now, and backtrack a year to just when the Sochi Olympics were winding down in Russia, and it appeared that the Cold War was starting again. And the reason that uh, it was starting again, okay, Isaac. Can I just enter on the keyboard? Okay, these are some headlines from what's just happened recently. Now, the reason that a lot of people think that the Cold War has started again is because Russia decided to try to exercise some authority over Ukraine. And the way that the Russia did it was kind of a stealth way of doing business today. It wasn't an overall invasion like in Afghanistan in December of 1979. It was done with pro-Russian activists already inside of Ukraine. What happened was they took some of the uh, parts of eastern Ukraine, including Crimea was the main uh, part of, of Ukraine, and they decided to introduce a referendum to vote for Crimea to go back to Russia. Now, Crimea is mostly Russian speaking. They also uh, had referendums for other parts of the Ukraine, and they brought that to a vote in May. So there were actually three regions, Donks, Luhanks, and Crimea that voted to become part of Russia. So in March it was Crimea, two months later the other two regions. So what continued to happen during that time frame was Russian arms and Russia equipment and Russian soldiers, but not dressed in Russian uniforms, were seeping into Ukraine, mostly Eastern Ukraine. And the hot war started and it progressed through the early summer, and in July of 2014, you all may remember this, a civilian airliner was shot down over Ukraine, and the West blamed pro-Russian activists for that time. Also at that time, sanctions began. So over the last six months, Russia and the Ukraine conflict has continued. There was a ceasefire in September. Uh, there was also a ceasefire late in the year, and this is something that is worth noting. In December of 2014, because of sanctions and the expense of fighting this war, the ruble, which is Russia's main currency, it went in half. It was cut in half its value. So that may be worth looking at down the line. So right now, there is a ceasefire that happened in early February that was brokered by France, Germany, and Russia. So there is a ceasefire in place now, but just last weekend, Russia sent tanks into eastern Ukraine, the regions that had become part of Russia. So fighting may start again. It hasn't totally died down, but there is a ceasefire. It's a shaky one, but it may start up again. The NATO response has been to what they call hold exercises that were already scheduled, but now they're being held with a new urgency because of the fact of what's going on in Ukraine. Since 2000, NATO has incorporated countries that were part of the old Eastern Bloc. So many of the countries, not including Ukraine, but other countries are now part of NATO. So because of that, you have exercises going on in Bulgaria. Western Ukraine has hosted exercises, even though they're not part of NATO. Lithuania and other countries close to Russia. So there have been exercises on NATO's part. Russia is also holding increased exercises, and they've increased their overflights by about a third. And just last week, during an exercise in the Black Sea, some backfire bombers, which are Russia's main medium-range bombers, scrambled and tried to interrupt this exercise, and NATO jets had to scramble to get them out of the area where they were holding this exercise because of sensitive information. So NATO has uh, responded in their own way, and the tension in Europe is a lot higher than it was a year ago. 
because the military components are so active on both sides. And a war, and I'm not an alarmist at all, but when you have two sides exercising as frequently as NATO and Russia are, accidents can happen, and a war or a minor war or a skirmish could start by accident. The third component is the Russian-U.S. relations, which have suffered greatly uh, during this time. And the main reason is the sanctions against Russia. And Russia and the U.S. right now are not talking. However, Vladimir Putin is a witty guy and will get on a horse without a shirt on and take a picture, have a picture taken of it to show how cool he is. But he's been very busy trying to keep track of what's going on in Ukraine. So basically what's happened last March, uh, they, <laughs> Obama authorized the first set of sanctions. They're basically sanctions against banks, bankers, people that move money within Russia. I don't want to get too detailed about that. He made a speech in September 2014. As part of the speech, he condemned the Russian action in Ukraine, along with ISIS, and talked about that the brutality of terrorists in Syria and Iraq, along with the Russian aggression in Europe, recalls the day when large nations trampled small ones. This has happened just recently. In March, our U.S. House of Representatives voted by that margin to arm Ukraine with offensive weapons. Russia's not happy about this. They say it's going to disrupt the whole situation or explode the whole situation. Obama has yet to act on this request from Congress. But the vote, the law, the authorization is there. And in 2016, if we elect a Republican president, possibly, or a different, you know, it's going to be a different president regardless, you may see U.S. arms flowing into Ukraine, which could change the balance of the situation as well. And this month, U.S. Army tanks are bolstering NATO military exercises. We have jets exercising in Poland. And in April, we are going to send some paratroopers into Ukraine, 200 of them, to exercise in the part of the country where the war isn't as intense, which is in the western part of Ukraine. So my point of this speech is, we should pay attention to what is going on. There is a new Cold War. I'm not the only one who thinks it. It's probably not going to accelerate as much as the old Cold War that did, but it is worth paying attention to because it'd be a lot easier if everybody just got along. Thank you.